Hearing a familiar voice, Seolian was overjoyed and cried tears of happiness. Sien got out of bed and looked for the source of the voice. He kept shouting, asking who was talking to him right now. Behind the door, a hand came out, grabbed his neck, and lifted him and the door up, hitting him in the chest and squeezing his throat, making him unable to breathe and struggle. At that moment, Taysan appeared and started lecturing him. He said that the world had people who were not human and even when caught red-handed, he always justified and said that he was not the only one like that. While lecturing, he choked young Seo, and preached to him. He was so scared that he repented, crying tears of suffocation. He said that if Taysan let him live, he would pay any price. Taysan asked him how much he would pay for his life. He panicked and said that if he let him go, 100 million would be Taysan's. Taysan said that his life was too cheap, not enough money for him to have breakfast. He quickly shouted and he could give 1 billion if he let him go. Taysan still slammed him on the table and the table exploded. He said that he didn't need money and he would need something else. He panicked and calmed down and breathed heavily, but before he could calm down, a bunch of pills were thrown in front of him. Taysan gave him the pills and wanted him to take them all because they were the kind of pills that he usually took, making people excited and hallucinate. He was terrified and cried. Taysan said that as long as he took all those pills, he wouldn't kill him. He begged him for forgiveness. Seeing that he refused, Taysan decided to put them in his mouth. His mouth was stuffed with pills and forced to swallow. It was really evil retribution. On the internet, people are discussing a video of young SEO on dancing wildly, without clothes, and running out to the street. He was only stopped when the police caught him. In an office building, screams and curses echoed. Everyone in the company was terrified by the noise. A golf club smashed into a flower pot, breaking it into pieces. Young Seo's father was furious to see his son taking too many drugs and making the headlines. He shouted at the manager, asking who gave his son the drugs. The manager said that his son went to a party at an entertainment company after receiving an invitation. He might have used the drugs there. When he heard that the entertainment company invited his son, he became even more angry and wanted the manager to go there and arrest everyone involved. The manager said that it was too late now, as the police had already taken them away. This made him even more frustrated. The manager said that the police arrested them for embezzlement and for harming other artists with tricks, causing them to commit suicide. Hearing this, Young Seo's father turned pale with fear. He quickly ordered the manager to stop all the media and to call a lawyer. The manager was panicked and did not know what to do, but he agreed and left. He was trying to contact someone with a high position. He needed to meet that person right away in the apartment where Taysan saw the forums discussing Young Sian's affair. Taysan felt happy and satisfied to say goodbye to him. That night, he ran and screamed in the night, leaving a deep impression on the Korean people. He also took Seo Yin home to rest. She was very panicked at that time, but finally drank some water and fell asleep. He also erased all the memory cards of the cameras at the scene. The director's brothers were also blocked by Taysan's blood vessels in their necks and might be paralyzed for life. For the rest of their lives, they would have to rely on diapers. They could be said to be alive, but not living. He remembered clearly that night he was very angry. He heard the system announce that he had dark karma points and was followed by evil parts. He didn't understand what those points were, but he didn't care, he wanted to destroy the trash completely, leaving no piece of garbage behind. The headquarters of the Fighton Hotel was in a panic. At this time, the hotel director still didn't understand where all the shares of the hotel had gone. His subordinate told him that a private fund had bought 20%, and he didn't know about the other times. The director wanted him to contact the buyer and offer to buy back the shares at double the price. The director had never been in such a crisis. This was the first time someone under his eyes could transfer all the shares so quickly. He didn't understand how with $10 billion in debt, 
he now only had three billion left. His subordinate said he didn't know who bought the shares, but he knew that the company was acquired by Korea Union. The condition to return the shares was to let a person from Korea be the largest shareholder. According to what he found out, the personal investment fund only held 1% of the company's shares. The director was very confused by the information he just heard and wanted him to find out who was behind all this. But for some personal reasons, he couldn't find out who was behind it. He wanted to find out at all costs. He wanted to increase the bet for Hillary, even if he had to use the power of the government. He was very angry, tore up the paper in his hand and swore that whoever it was, he would catch and skin them and throw them into the desert. In Tayson's office, he asked Robert to open a free auction meeting, the main target was Anna Group. Robert quickly understood and asked how far he wanted to go. He smiled and said that he wanted to take over the rights of the group. Robert quickly understood and arranged to work. Then, he reported to Taysan that the Fighton Group had contacted the union and wanted to buy back the shares. He said they wanted to buy it back at a good price. But Taysan said he wouldn't sell the shares in his hand. Taysan ordered him to quickly transfer the business documents to the shareholders and follow his plan. The conversation ended, and they quickly turned off the machine. Taysan stood by the window and looked down. He thought that even if they were helpers, he would turn them into the best people in the world. Taysan felt happy and confident, excited in his heart. At this moment, suddenly there was a security guard announcing that Manager Huang from the entertainment company came to see him. Manager Huang entered and was surprised to find that the person in front of him was an old acquaintance. He was shocked, not expecting that this day would happen to him. Meanwhile, Taysan just smiled because he knew he would be surprised. He quickly invited the manager to sit down and discuss work. He hesitated to say that he had invited the manager so suddenly that he seemed very surprised, but it was really surprising. The manager felt that the truth was like a joke, a joke that was not funny at all. Taysan quickly explained that the current representative director of the entertainment company had been cut, and this was the manager's intention, because only when he was cut, the lives of the young people and him would be better. He still didn't know who had cut the director of the company. The answer was revealed as soon as he thought. He said that he himself had cut the director of the company. The manager was stunned and didn't understand where he was right now, he still didn't know what was really going on. At this time, Taysan said that everything would be handed over to the manager and promoted him to director. After choosing the director, he changed the name of the entertainment company to MTS. The manager felt that today was like going through a lifetime. He turned into a stone statue to record his achievements for the future days. Taysan asked him if he remembered the words he had said before. He still didn't know what Taysan was talking about, nor did he understand how he had been promoted to director. Taysan continued, he himself had promised that after being promoted, he would try to take care of the young people so that they could live better. He suddenly remembered that conversation took place on the day of skiing. The words he said then had now become reality. Taysan said that the Korean Idol wave would spread across the world and hoped he would develop it better than it is now. He was amazed by Taysan's prophecy, not believing what was happening. Taysan continued, in the future, the K-pop wave would overflow from Korea and spread all over the globe as a new wave. Taysan wanted him to do what he was doing and do it better than it is now, because he wanted Seoyeon to walk on a path full of roses. At a cafe, Taysan was discussing with the director how to deal with the old entertainment company. The company was settled smoothly, thanks to the director. The director asked him if he liked Seoyeon and that was why he helped her so much. He smiled and answered that he helped her because she looked like his twin siblings. He asked the director how he would handle buying the entire law firm. The director was surprised by his idea. He wanted the director to buy all the shares of the law firm to help him, but he was afraid they would not sell. Taysan said that the first person who agreed to sell the shares would get 100 billion, and the second one would get 90 billion. 
the director felt that he talked about money as if it was a small number. Taysan quickly corrected him. He said that the law firm Samu deserved the money he spent. Taysan advised the director not to worry and just follow his instructions. The director thought he was very strange. He ordered the director to handle everything smoothly and keep the core of the company to continue working. The director felt very difficult because this company was related to big businesses, and it was hard to buy it back. Taysan said, you just need to avoid any enemies. All the related companies will be his clients. Director Joe felt panicked by his thoughts. He said he wanted him to keep the employees who texted him and fire anyone who betrayed him. Director Joe could not believe it and asked him if he had to fire the whole company. He said yes with a firm expression and he wanted to receive the list of employees before firing them. The director agreed happily and quickly. Taysan wanted to proceed with this as soon as possible. The director agreed happily and quickly did it. Looking out the window, Taysan thought that maybe he loved her more than his wife. At this time, there was an employee reporting to his boss about a huge amount of money flowing everywhere without knowing the identity. His boss was sitting on the chair and was surprised by the report. He continued to report and the money kept flowing into all the countries, America, Hong Kong, Europe. The director quickly asked him, what about the scale then? He replied that the scale had exceeded $10 billion and was hidden very cleverly. He had only grasped it recently. The director felt that it was not a small amount of money and had to prosecute it to the end. But the employee reported that it was very difficult to identify the identity because the source was unclear. Even if they investigated IB, they could not find anything because it was a private investment fund. The director felt a bit surprised by this incident. He thought for a while. The employee asked if they should report to the authorities to summon everyone for investigation or not. The director said they should not expose their tale to others. He wanted to become a hibernating snake, waiting for the moment to wake up. When all the forces were arranged satisfactorily, he would become the beneficiary because he had endured the humiliation for the past 100 years. He asked the employee to contact and investigate the smallest developments. The employee quickly agreed. Perhaps soon he and the employee would have to communicate by code instead of being able to call directly like that anymore. The employee quickly agreed and ended the call. He looked towards the city and thought that the era of cat and mouse had passed and finally the era of waiting for prey had also passed. Now he wanted to become the boss of everything. At the airport, the director's car of the entertainment company gave Taysan a little comfort and felt not feel too bad. He did not worry about the current director of the company, because he would decide what to do and everything was going according to his plan. He thought of a hotel manager fighting in the dark who was his person, making him smile smugly. Suddenly, he thought of the uncle who had kicked his mother out of the house that year. He wanted to find this person to avenge his mother. The upcoming 2008 would be the time of crisis for all businesses. Businesses would fall into a slump. Suddenly, there was a call of his English name behind him. He quickly turned around and saw his girlfriend's family just got off the plane. He smiled warmly and called her name Plaza. In a dark place in the building of darkness, there was only a flickering candle, someone whispered that the descendant of the Iron Mask had awakened and took the Sword of Revenge, he would cut off the heads of the dragon and the snake. At this time, everyone was sitting down in a Japanese style. The man told his subordinates to prepare, to spread fear and trample on them. Everyone shouted in unison, we will definitely trample on them. Then, he looked at his subordinates and said, quickly find him and kill them all. Everyone shouted in unison, yes sir. He smiled mysteriously, thinking of him. Then, he smiled crazily, wanting to kill him immediately. At this time, at Taysen's house, Taysen's mother happily came out and greeted the new guests. Plaza ran over and hugged Taysen's mother's husband, she called her mother affectionately. Plaza's father was surprised by the beauty of Korea. 
Meanwhile, everyone was happy to see each other after a long time. Plas's mother greeted everyone and introduced herself as Emmanuel. Plas's father also introduced himself as Leon. He was embarrassed and said that he was rude for not bringing gifts to join the family. Taysen's mother also quickly greeted everyone and introduced herself as Seo Jean, Taysen's mother. Taysan asked about his father, but his mother said that his father had gone out with his two sisters and would not return until night. Suddenly, Plas's father was startled when he looked at the house. He said that this was the land with the best fortune he had ever seen. He couldn't believe he could come to such a beautiful place. At this time, at Young Seo's father's company, he asked the manager who Tae San was and learned that he was the junior of his son. Studying at the same school, the manager told him that he had just enrolled. He didn't understand what enrolling had to do with his son being forced to take drugs. The manager quickly explained that it was because the cameras did not record, so they still did not know who attacked his son. The girl who went with young Seo Yin called the attacker's brother. According to the investigation, that person could be young Tae San. The manager reported that this was accurate information and he had investigated it. The manager said that he had investigated very carefully and only knew that Seo Yin only had one person called brother, Tae San. Young Seo's father still didn't believe that a freshman could force his son to take drugs alone. If that really happened, it meant that Taysan was really good. The manager also felt that this was true, because in the countryside, just holding a knife would be arrested by the police. He asked Young Seo's father if he remembered the students fighting with thugs in the previous years. He suddenly remembered and was even more surprised when Young Taysan was the one who punished those thugs after the manager's reports. He decided to call Team 2 to deal with Taysan. The manager was surprised when he called Team 2, because this team was very violent. He shouted, if not Team 2, then what other team? Because he was very fierce. He also clenched his fist and slammed it on the table in anger. He thought that if everything investigated was true, then maybe he would have to kill Yang Taysan. At this time, in Taysan's yard, it was very cheerful. His father and Plaza's father were shoulder to shoulder drinking together. The two twins suddenly saw the scene in front of them, not knowing if this was the first meeting of these two people or not. Right now, there was no trace of Taysan and Plaza on the dining table. The two walked lightly in the back garden. Plaza felt happy when the scenery here was really beautiful. She said that it was really strange that every time she came to Korea, her mood would become better. Taysan said that if he went to Hong Kong, his mood would also become better. Plaza explained that because Korea was where she was born, she loved this place very much. Suddenly, she was silent, hesitating, but couldn't say anything. Suddenly, she called his name, making him very surprised. She told him that no matter what happened, they would never become enemies. He wondered what was going on. He pulled her into his arms and asked if it was because of the company's work that made her feel tired or not. He told her that if she felt too hard there, she should quit and come back to Korea to work with him. She said she would do that. Suddenly, she said that if he wanted to help her, maybe he would also be kicked out of the house. She called his name affectionately, making him feel embarrassed. She wrapped her arms around his neck and said that at this time they should forget all the thoughts in their heads and just want to love each other. Then, they gave each other a passionate kiss. At Taysen's company, right now Seo Yin's phone rang, her voice was cheerful and said to meet, she would treat him to this beetle nut. He wondered why she wanted to invite him to eat today. She said that it was because she had a salary today, so she wanted to invite him to eat. She started to talk about her recent life, not as much pressure as before. Her manager also treated her very well. She began to chatter about her life, eating better, being treated better and having a fixed salary. Besides, after four months of contract, there were also various types of insurance for employees, making her feel very happy. Taysan happily told her that her company was awesome. 
She also told him that maybe the sponsor of the company was also a cool person like him, who could make the company so good. She said that only comparing with him was the best, because he was the best person in the world. Hearing the noise on his end, Celian asked if he was busy or not. She asked if he was dating other girls lately. He said that he was a bit busy, because he was about to start school. Then, the two talked about the spring album of the group. At this time, he had gone down to the basement to park. He advised her that even if she was tired, she should try to endure to fulfill her dream of becoming an idol. At this time, suddenly he looked at the garage. He told her that it was late, she should go to sleep. Then, he quickly hung up. At this time, someone called his name angrily from behind him. Quickly looking back, he saw a very crowded group of people standing in line to beat him. He just smiled and didn't feel scared at all. Suddenly, a loud call rang out in the parking garage. The bearded old man came out and looked at him with a resigned face. At this time, Tessa looked back at him, he asked why he was so taciturn, just calling him hey. He looked at him with a superior face and said that he could call him whatever he wanted, it seemed that he also had some guts. Looking at these people, he knew right away that they were useless, all a bunch of murderers and robbers. Wanting to quickly end everything, he asked them what they wanted. The manager felt that waiting for Team 2 to handle a kid was too long. He waited impatiently and uncomfortably. At this time in the parking garage, a melee had started, actually it was a gang fight against Taysan. But the fight turned into Taysan fighting them all. Seeing his people being beaten was very shocking, but at this time Taysan just said that he accidentally hit them. He punched the face of the closest person, shouted that he should go to the hospital and repent. Taysan rushed into the enemy, every step he ran was his hand punching someone. He punched continuously, making them retreat. He smiled triumphantly. The bearded old man asked him who the hell he was. Blood splattered all over the parking lot, he smiled confidently and introduced himself as Yang Taysan. In the head of the department's office, the phone rang. The head of department quickly picked up the phone to answer. He shouted at the other end of the line, asking what they were doing that took so long. He complained that they worked too slowly, and it was only one kid, but it took them so long. Taysan greeted the head of the department. Was he holding the phone right now? Hearing the voice of a stranger, the head of department panicked and asked who was on the other end of the line. He said he was Yang Taysan, which shocked the head of the department. Taysan asked the head of department why he was looking for him, while at that moment, in the parking lot, there was a bloody corpse and they all fainted. Taysan got straight to the point, saying that he had nothing to do with Yong Xian's case, because Yong Xian knew that it was a drug, so how could he force him to drink it? He asked, didn't anyone know that, even the president? He said that he was very good at burning other people's houses, but he was not good at anything else. On the other side, the head of the department's voice rang out. He asked where team leader Huang was and why he answered the phone. Team leader Huang was lying on the ground, so he told the head of department that he had a concussion and couldn't answer the phone, so he helped him. Taysan was annoyed, and told the other end of the line to shut up and listen to him. Taysan promised the head of department that if anyone touched him, he would give everyone all the photos and videos of today because today the power of life and death was in his hands. He continued to threaten the head of department, saying that even if he was stupid, he knew what to say and what not to say. His words made the head of department panic. He also revealed to the head of department that his mother belonged to the faction that everyone feared and his mother's surname was Cho, which shocked him. Taysan smiled and said on the phone that he shouldn't mess with him, and he shouldn't let him find out. The head of the department was still shocked to hear that his mother was from the Cho clan, and he was almost speechless. It was morning in Korea. Taysan's building had been operating since early morning, he looked at the screen and said that today he had a very important contract, so he called early. 
the director on the screen reported to him that today he had a contract signing at 11 a.m. and asked if he had any more instructions. Taysen told the director that he hoped he would arrange everything well. He continued to ask the director about the law firm, and the director also reported that he had half of the agreement to transfer. He was happy to hear this news. The director asked how he was doing lately. He reassured the director and said there was nothing to worry about. He would tell him later if he had a chance. The director happily agreed, and they ended the conversation. Taysan thought of Yancio's father. He might be struggling in this mess. He called Robert again and asked how the preparations were going. Robert asked him what had happened. He told him that he had almost been kidnapped by them and Anna. Robert was shocked to hear that his boss had been kidnapped. He wanted to call the assassins to send them to Korea for him. He broke out in a cold sweat. He said that he had some assassins in Korea who could handle everything quickly and without leaving a trace. He didn't want to use a butcher knife to kill a chicken. He told Robert not to send anyone and asked how the situation was going. Robert said that everything was ready and they were just waiting for his order. He ordered him to start today and prepare to make a big move. Robert quickly accepted the task and said he would finish it immediately. He wanted to send all the money to another place so that they couldn't buy it all at once. Then he would finish them all. Robert quickly agreed and said he didn't have to worry about it. He knew that from tomorrow, Chairman O would be a fish on the chopping board. In the office of the company, Chairman O asked the manager if he had confirmed that he was really from the Joe family. The manager said that he had personally investigated and confirmed that it was true. The manager said that Taysen's mother was the daughter of the former chairman. At this point, he realized that his mother was actually the half-sister of the current chairman. The manager told him another piece of bad news that all the Team 2 sent were defeated by Taysen. He was furious and said that they were all useless. But at this time, the manager was worried that the Joe family would be angry. He said that the chairman of that family was also a useless guy and there was nothing to worry about. The manager said that Taysen's house had a lot of money and stocks. He was very worried about this. He angrily asked what about Seoyan. At this moment, the phone rang. He picked up the phone and the other end said that the financial manager needed to see him urgently. He was surprised to hear about the financial manager. He invited him to the office. The financial manager ran in and called him. He had a stack of documents in his hand. The manager and the chairman were also startled by his attitude. They asked him what was going on and why he was so hurried. He said breathlessly that something big had happened to the company. He asked him what had happened. He said breathlessly that the company was being attacked by affiliated funds from abroad. The chairman and the head of the department panicked when they heard this news. But they were even more panicked when the finance director said that everything was sold as short selling. They were scared pale, as if they lost several liters of blood, and screamed to confirm this information again. The radio was reporting that the stock price of Anna Group was falling every day. They also announced that the U.S. partner of Anna Company was being investigated by the Federal Tax Bureau for suspected tax evasion. The consequence of this was that the group's stock price had dropped more than 40%. This information would cause the whole world to fall into a global financial crisis. At this time, Taysan was driving his beloved car and remarked that it was too late for them to do anything now. His face showed a cunning expression and that was the price they had to pay for what Anna Group had done. No wonder he could drive so calmly. The scene changed to the school he was attending. He went to the vending machine at school and bought himself a can of water. Suddenly someone called him, making him startled. He turned around, and it was his senior Azin. She looked at him and said that he seemed to be doing well today. He shyly thanked her for inviting him to a delicious meal the day before. She asked why he didn't call her, but Taysan thought in his head that it was because she had confessed to him when she was drunk, so he probably couldn't answer that question. 
so he avoided it by complimenting Yuji for being very beautiful today, even though the sportswear she wore was nothing special. It was also thanks to the dating skills that Mr. Nova had taught him. That sentence surprised Yuji. Taesan seemed to care a lot about this sister, so he gave her a can of water and said, The weather is getting warmer, but it's still very cold, please drink. He said that while winking, and it made Yuji very surprised by his clever way of speaking. She thought he was a jerk. Taesan didn't answer her question, but said that he would invite her to a meal next time. He also deliberately said that he had a class and had to go first, which made Yuji so angry that she felt like she had two devil horns on her head. She asked him if he was going to attend the freshman reception, and she thought in her head that Waimi, an old student, also have a class, and have a major class on this day, the day of the reception. But the freshmen of the law department don't have a major class on Monday. She knew she had been fooled, so she couldn't suppress her anger. Taesan walked leisurely. The atmosphere of the top university in Seoul was unmistakable. The facilities here looked moneyed. There were all kinds of people studying here, mainly two types the single ones and the ones with partners. Igu was sitting in class and the girl next to her asked her. She asked why she looked sad as if she had been dumped. Igu was embarrassed and denied that she was thinking about having to draw for two more years and felt it was difficult. The girl next to her seemed to not believe her words, because she thought Igu was very smart but also vague about the future. She continued to say that Igu's family must be very busy, so she should just study hard and get high grades and then go abroad and become a professor. Everyone started the class. The long-haired lecturer started to pay attention to the people around and asked for attendance immediately. He continued to tell the students below that this attendance would not be repeated again, because for him, an artist, the best words could only be his own paintings. He also gave a great opportunity for all those who participated in the top art competitions, they would be exempted from all classes immediately. That would of course still count towards the grades for everyone, but there would be exceptions. That was if anyone could paint a picture that he liked, they would pass all his major subjects. After saying that, he looked arrogant with the crowd of students below. He started to call each one by name, and he knew very well anyone he read including Igu. He was right, because she had been in his class last year. There was a guy who was called, he was a student on leave, but he looked like a fool. He started to see a strange phenomenon when he looked at the attendance book, because he saw a law student in his class. Yuji's sister heard the law student and was terrified. She was very surprised to hear this. She probably thought it was true, the teacher read very loudly and clearly, the name Jang Taesan suddenly his voice rose from behind Yuji. She really didn't believe this anymore. She looked closely at Taesan to see if it was really him, who else could it be but him? The teacher seemed confused and said that he seemed to have enrolled in the wrong class, right? Taesan answered very loudly and clearly, No, sir, it's right, not wrong, professor. Taysan's handsome appearance made Cho, the girl sitting next to him, notice and ask Yuji if she knew him. Yuji didn't know what to say at this time. The professor continued to ask Taysan why he didn't understand why a law student was here, but he didn't register for the general subjects, right? He answered in the surprise of everyone that he heard that the other subjects were also general. The professor replied that he had to be good at 100% of the practice part. Taesan argued in the annoyance of the professor and the astonishment of Yuji. He said that wasn't it the professor who said that for an artist, the words were his own paintings. The professor defended that the statement was only for this major, but he also replied that he also studied art. The professor started to get annoyed and asked Taesan if he could stop joking. Even if he was new, his patience had limits. He continued to say that tonight, everyone had a week to change their registration. They should register for their own subjects again. Taesan was very determined and said that he didn't want to because he was confident that he would do well. That insult made the professor angry enough to yell and slam his hand on the table. 
he shouted in surprise at everyone because he thought Taysan treated him like an idiot and that made him so angry. Taysan still politely replied that he really liked art more than law. He was confident that he could do well in this subject because art was beauty, so anyone could learn it. At this point, the teacher was angry to the point of turning black. He was still very confident and he wanted to prove to this teacher that he asked the boss to let him do the homework. The students here could test any technique, because it didn't matter to him. The professor heard that, then smiled and laughed loudly. He would certainly be the one to grade him. But that didn't scare him at all. He said that he would be the judge of this test, and if Taysan failed this time, he should shut up and leave. Taysan smiled calmly and agreed with his words. Yuji was very worried for him in this test, because she didn't know if he really had the ability or not. Everyone in the room was very shocked by a law student who wanted to try his hand at art. But he wasn't worried at all and even comforted everyone at this time. He fell into a different space, a fairy said that he had arrived. Well, he had been waiting for him for a long time. He was very surprised because he didn't know who the person in front of him was. He had a beard and was smiling at him. He introduced himself as his uncle and a painter. He asked him if he was his uncle. Was he also one of the ancestors of his family? He smiled and said that in Korea, everyone was brothers, sisters, aunts, and uncles on one land. He explained that if he met an older person, he also had to call them aunt or uncle like that. It meant that everyone was related to each other in some way. Hearing this made him sweat. It turned out that this person was pretending. But he quickly caught the point he said, that he was a painter. He quickly realized that he was the drunken painting fairy in the legend. He chuckled and said that, yes, he was the drunken painting fairy. He smiled and didn't understand why he was here. Seeing his face, he said that he didn't bring any trouble for him, so why did he look like that? Then he explained that he also wanted to come here to help him. But, helping meant exchanging the points that he had. In the end, he understood that it was because of the points that he appeared. He said that there would be a deal, he would teach him how to draw, and he would give him the points. He knew that he had to deal with people like him calmly. He asked him with a bewildered look, what is the use of teaching that? He listed the good things about painting, saying that painting could also make a lot of money, especially in this era. But he bluntly told him that he had a lot of money and didn't want to paint for money anymore. He felt that he was very selfish, not generous at all. He said that, if you are stingy, even if you become a monk, you will be stingy. But he didn't think so because he had a happy life with a full stomach every day. At this time, suddenly a voice called for work from behind. A few strangers came to the front of the master and said that they had been waiting for him for a long time in the house. The voices of the four of them talking and discussing were heard. Tessa stared at them, paying attention to how they dressed. He felt that they looked very familiar, but still couldn't remember who they were. He asked the painter who the people who had just arrived were. The master said that maybe he didn't know them, because they were not very famous. These people quickly greeted him. A long-haired man introduced himself as Jiyujiwen. Hearing his name made him very shocked, thinking that he had heard wrong. Seeing his face, he continued to correct himself, his name was Paul Jiyujiwen. He knew that this person was a famous painter, representing the Impressionist painting. He introduced the bald uncle next to him. He thought that maybe he would know this person. The bald uncle introduced himself, his name was Pukia Dance. He knew that this person was the lonely one who was likened to the father of modern painting. He was very surprised by the people who had just appeared and introduced themselves. Suddenly he looked behind the two of them. A man standing strangely in his hands also made him feel very familiar. Moreover, his hands were bandaged, making him think of something that made him shocked. With his own thoughts, maybe that man was Van Gogh. At this time in the classroom, his hand was still drawing on the white paper. All the students in the room were itching at his strokes. 
his hand continued to draw smoothly, without stopping. Everyone looked at the painting he was drawing, stunned like a statue. Everyone was watching the event in front of them, thinking that it was really crazy that a law student could draw a painting like that. Everyone recognized that the colors of this painting were all in the style of Van Gogh, even the teacher was very panicked when he looked at the painting that he had drawn, like a painting god full of Van Gogh's style. The Korean university was still bustling, students constantly moving around like a spindle in the West Lecture Hall. The teacher sat there from the end of the lecture, looking at young Taysen's painting. The color of the painting was the madness and soul that only Van Gogh could express. He felt that Taysen had more painting talent than him. Everything in the painting is not complicated, but it is intentional. He knew that if he brought this painting to the famous painters for appraisal, they would surely say that it was Van Gogh's work, only different in color. His coloring was not desperate and miserable like Van Gogh, but those things were compensated by the peace and simplicity, making the painting very warm. Another teacher ran in with a painting to find him. He asked Professor Cha, what did you come to find me for? He happily said that he had met a very terrible person today. He said that he had met a painter, but he did not know who the painter was in his words. Professor Cha returned the tiger painting to the table for the teacher to see. The tiger painting was very vivid, and the two people were very surprised to see it, because it looked like the tiger was moving in the painting, especially the eyes of the tiger were very soulful, as if it could escape from the painting at any time and roar. Let everyone know that it is the king of the mountain. The teacher was very amazed by the painting with the very skillful painting technique that had reached the peak. The teacher looked at Professor Cha and asked if the work was his. If so, he was definitely a great painter. Professor Cha quickly denied that he had painted the painting. So maybe this painting, originating from a former art student, or something, Professor Cha said? Recently, it was a painting by a student who had not graduated yet which surprised the teacher. Looking closely at the painting, there was a bright red mark, a seal on the painting that revealed the painter who painted it. And this seal was named Yang Taysan. The teacher asked him suspiciously if the student had attended the class in the afternoon or not. Professor Cha quickly said that he had attended the class this afternoon. The teacher asked cheerfully, Are you sure he is a law student? Professor Cha said that it was true as he had said, looking at the painting, the teacher wilted. In the afternoon in Korea, Yuji looked at Taysan with a curious face. Why did he appear in the drawing room? Taysan asked her indifferently, is it not allowed for law students to draw or something? She quickly embarrassedly said that she did not mean that. Taysan smiled and asked her, what did you mean then? Anyway, he asked him why he drank rice wine in the daytime. Taysan said that, seeing her, he craved rice wine. Taysan had drunk up to the second pot, both of them were slippery, falling on the table. Yuji questioned him that if he was only a freshman, he shouldn't drink alcohol on the first day of school like that. Taysan old and blind said that he only drank when he met her, he didn't drink like this with anyone else. Hearing him say that made her astonished, opening her eyes wide to see her reaction. He smiled mysteriously. Suddenly, he praised her for being really beautiful, making her blush. The night in Korea was still the familiar warm cotton blanket smell that she had smelled before. Yuji woke up with a headache like a hammer after a night of drinking. Opening her eyes wide, she was surprised to find that she was at Taysen's house. It was the familiar room that she had stayed in, and this time she continued to faint like before, being brought back here. She was embarrassed to calm herself down. Then, she opened the blanket to check if her clothes had shifted from before going to sleep. Specifically, when she saw that she didn't lose anything, she thought that this time she had drunk so much that she fainted like that. Stepping out of the room, she quickly blamed Taysan. Every time she met him, she got drunk. Walking to the desk, there were a lot of paintings. The most prominent painting was Gogwin's. She was horrified to see these paintings, not thinking that all of them could be drawn by Taysan. At the Korean University. 
College of Music, the gentle and melodious sound of the violin, blending with the music from other instruments. The professor of the College of Music sat there, thinking about his homeland. He felt very homesick and wanted to go back to his hometown, because he had entered his forties. But suddenly, he heard a wonderful sound from the piano in the room. Taysan was playing the piano on the stage. He was very surprised that a freshman could play a legendary piece of music with such a high difficulty. His slender hand slid on the keys gently. All the people who accompanied him felt that his piano skills were too amazing. Many people standing there were stunned when they heard the sound. The curious eyes looked at him and didn't know who he was that could play such a legendary piece of music. Like a genius. Looking at his paintings, Yuji felt that Taysan was a born genius. Suddenly behind Taysan asked her how she felt about his paintings. Yuji discovered that Taysan was playing the piano, making her completely surprised when he could both paint and play the piano. He happily looked at her and said that if she liked any painting, she could take it. She could hardly believe that he could give her such masterpieces so easily. He said that there were a few more paintings on the drawing board, and she could take a look. He got up from the piano and asked her how his performance was. She didn't know how to say it, but she felt very refreshed after listening. It was the first time she heard such beautiful music. He smiled and thanked her politely. She felt that he was like a person who could do anything, very cool. She asked him if he was preparing for some competition or something. He walked up to her and said no, making her embarrassed. He said that he wanted to apply for the piano department of the music school in the afternoon. Yuji felt crazy when a law student chose art and piano as his minor subjects. In the music school, the applause of everyone was deafening. Taysan smiled when he heard the applause. Everyone cheered for his excellent performance. He greeted everyone and introduced himself as Zhang Taysan a law student who applied for the piano in the afternoon. Everyone was shocked when they heard that he was a law student. Because a musical genius should not be in the law department. He looked at everyone and heard the whispers of praise about himself, making them feel satisfied. Taysan's new office, Taysan and the lawyer were talking about the new office transfer. The lawyer said that he was really jealous of Taysan. He asked him why he called him here, if there was anything important. Taysan called him to discuss the acquisition of the business that he had mentioned before, and that he would have an interview soon. The lawyer still didn't understand what these things had to do with him, and why he was called here. Taysan said that he was the director of the law office Samu and would have more experience than him. If so, he could help him a lot in the social relations about the law. In fact, the lawyer knew that he just wanted to use him as a shield. Taysan asked him if he would help him if there was a consultation fee. He hesitated and said that money was just an illusion. The lawyer sweated profusely and said that he was the one who changed his life. So working for him was also a matter of course. The phone rang at the end of the line, indicating that the interviewer had arrived. Tessa quickly waited for them to enter his office. A fat man walked in step by step until he was in front of the lawyer. He bowed at a 90-degree angle and respectfully greeted the CEO of the lawyer. Embarrassed, he said that he was not the CEO. The fat uncle looked around the room and didn't know where he was. The lawyer pointed to Yang Taysan and said he was the CEO. The fat man looked at Taysan and asked hesitantly if he was really the CEO. At this moment, in Taysan's mind, he thought that this person was a tool, a naive and honest tool. Taysan reached out his hand in front of him to shake hands. Then, he introduced himself as John Taysan, the CEO of the investment group. He seemed quite confused when he realized that the boss was so young. Taysan knew that he had devoted himself to Tube in his previous life. He had a tall figure, strong shoulders, a wide forehead and a pair of big bright eyes that could pounce on the prey at any time. He quickly bowed down and shook hands with Taysan. He introduced himself as the CEO of Bowen Company, named Gene One. 
This handshake started a new era for Bao and Company, which was on the verge of collapse from 50 people to 20 people. Qin Wan was very surprised that Tae San was so young. Tae San invited him to sit down and teased him, saying that he didn't need to be afraid. He also didn't know how to bite the company up and solve the collapse problem. Qin Wan was holding the company with all the capital he had. He really needed a lifeline. The lawyer quickly introduced himself as the director of the law firm Samu. He said that he shouldn't look too negatively at Tae San. He had also heard some introductions about him and wanted to interview him through this conversation. Jean Wan thanked both of them awkwardly. Suddenly, Taysen's voice rose as he said that he would take over Bao and Company. Jean Wan was shocked and surprised, looking at Taysen with a suspicious expression. Taysen also didn't understand why this uncle force looked at him so intently. Unexpectedly, Jean Wan spoke up and said that Bao and Company had collapsed and investing in it would not be beneficial. Taysan smiled and said that because it was about to collapse, he invested in it, making the uncle force not understand what he was saying. He continued to say that he burned money into Bao and Company to protect himself. Jean Wan reminded him that hiring security from outside would be cheaper than hiring from Bao and Company. Jean Wan said that, because they were all veterans, the rent was very high. Taysan said that because he trusted Jean Wan's actions, he decided to invest in this collapsing company. He continued to say that he would take over 20 employees of the company, including Director Han. This made him very surprised. Taysan also said that he would provide the latest equipment and upgrade the company. He looked at his uncle Luke Luong and asked for his opinion. His uncle shed tears and was touched. He kept saying that he was grateful to Taysan. His uncle Luke Luong emphasized the first task, to hire 50 new employees for the company. He was very happy and said that whatever he wanted to do, just tell him. Taysan and the lawyer looked at him and smiled contentedly. The second thing he wanted his uncle to do was to move the company to the fifth floor of the building. Immediately, at this time, the system announced that he had received a lot of karma points. It was night in Korea. Taysan sat on the computer. On the screen, he opened a financial news page saying that Anna's company was on the verge of collapse. Seeing this, he was very happy. He felt that the reporter was very excellent. He needed to give more money to write pages like this. The comments revolved around the issue of Anna's company's collapse. He felt that perhaps the chairman of this company was very desperate right now. Suddenly, the system notified that he had received evil points. Looking out, it was dark. He wanted to call the gods to learn the lessons for the next day. He spoke to the air and asked if there was any god who specialized in information technology. Suddenly, he was startled to find a light shining from the computer. The computer had a large beam of light shining straight into his face, making him very dazzled. He fell into a dark place where there was nothing that the naked eye could see. He shouted towards the light, asking, Is this person a god? The light told him that maybe he could be called a god. He was very curious, Is there something uncertain about being a god, or what? A boy, smoking, said that he had been waiting for him for a long time. Taysan was very surprised that a god was waiting for him. The figure stepped out of the darkness and told him that he had slept. He would be the first one to summon him. Taysan felt that this person was not normal at all. Suddenly, he said that he was really disappointed, making him not understand what he was saying. The brother explained that he had thought he would get the first point before the other gods. He also said that he was different from other mortals. He was confused and thought that maybe there were other people like him in this world. He looked at the figure in the dark and wanted him to turn on the light, but he refused, because he didn't trust him very much. Taysan thought in his head that maybe this god had just finished playing with something and was very high. Clearly, if he turned on the light, the person who would be embarrassed was him, not Taysan. Suddenly, the darkness spoke and cursed him for being a fool. He was shocked to be scolded without knowing the reason. 
Taysam lost his patience, played cat and mouse with him and asked who he was in the end. He introduced his name to him again, but he really didn't want to know his name, he just wanted to know his title. The boy, he belonged to the chariot of the spider god, or some other separate alliance. He smiled and said that he didn't belong to the spider's faction, because it was too boring. Taysan was also surprised that he dared to criticize the spider god. He looked at the dark space, the person in front of him insulted the great god. He thought that maybe this person was an evil god. He was scared by his own thoughts. He flicked the cigarette ash and introduced himself again. He was a god who liked evil points the most, named Jimmy CGV. He comforted him, no need to be afraid of him, because he would not take his soul like the evil ones out there. Suddenly, he asked him how proficient he wanted to be in computers. He said that he didn't have high requirements, just wanted to know a little bit of everything. He asked him if he knew what the nature of the contract was. He quickly said no. He explained that this contract required a deposit of evil points before completing the transaction. He was surprised because it was the first time he knew he had to deposit points. He explained further, evil points were the points to summon evil gods and use those points to summon them to exchange for skills. He praised his evil points for being very pure. Finally, he sighed with relief, because this person came here just for his points. He smiled wickedly as if he was about to execute his plan. But at this moment, Taysan said that he despised the skill that he used his evil points to exchange, making him panic.